Hi, I'm Tommy from Carrera Casting. In today's best practices, we're featuring machine maintenance and getting the most out of your 3D printers. In today's episode, we'll be covering jet maintenance. I want to talk about the jets. A lot of what happens with uh, 3Zs and any, any printer is that we have jet problems. But a lot of the problems that happen with jets actually can be solved without replacing the jets or it's a problem that mimics a jet problem. For instance, if you're working and the machine is on and you see, now I've done this, I've taken off the magnets so I can move the X motor and the Y motor freely and you see that it's going to a certain spot and then it goes back and purges and fires continuously always when it goes to the same spot that's not a jet problem that is usually a printer head cable or what we call a ribbon cable that goes straight to the the printer heads now this printer head cable is connected to the computer inside the machine and when the program, when the 3Z works, goes in and it tells it where to go, usually that happens when there's a kink inside the cable. So as it's moving, the kink either opens or closes and causes either inerrant voltage to come in or it just separates. So it comes back and it says something is wrong. And what it does is it keeps firing. You're going to notice that your little... Uh, cup here is going to be full of material. You might even run out of material. That usually is not a jet problem. That usually is a printer head problem. Another thing that causes problems is when the filters haven't been changed. In a separate episode, we spoke in detail about keeping your filters clean, keeping your caps tight. All these things can mimic a jet problem because you're thinking the jet's not firing correctly or enough material and you go and you change the jet. Now the jet is very expensive, okay? So you want to exhaust basically all these problems before you go ahead and change the jet. Another thing that happens is your paper here is not wiping the jet enough, okay? So what you need to check here is that the solenoid underneath pushes up the paper. Now you can do this by going into your monitor in the front going more moving it to where it says function tests press that you hear a little click and you're going to see the paper come up that's testing if the solenoid is on or not you also do a paper advance like we did in the other episodes by pressing move okay now after a very long build even though the nib of the jet has been cleaned continuously by the paper it still fires down little what we call crosses to check its calibration you'll notice this here okay now this checks to see if the jet is working and if these are off and when the sensor picks it up and it doesn't like it the machine will stop or it will go back and try to clean the jet by purging and firing all right. Now, if it does this enough, it accumulates at the tip of the jet enough material that it begins to clog the tip of the jet. Now, this is a universal jet, which means when you replace a jet, whatever station it goes to, whether it be build or support, that's it. That's the only place it can ever go. Either it's going to be a, a support forever or a build forever. But our concern right now is keeping this this jet clean sometimes it does not clean enough when it goes through the paper wipe because it does a lot of checks or you might not have cleaned that little hole inside the tank as we spoke of in our latest episodes so what we need to do is clean it well, how do you clean it there's a very 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 small hole that shoots out the material everything else around it is just supporting that so if you start getting material in this area here, because as the tape is wiping, you'll notice as it's coming this way, it will clear it from where the hole is, but it'll start accumulating on the outside. That causes buildup, the same type of buildup that is caused on your cutter. That has to get cleaned. You don't throw away a jet just because it has buildup. 
Now the way to do that is first, you open up, take away your backsplash here and the cup. You take a lint-free Q-tip or a Kim wipe, which is my favorite. You can use this, so that way you don't scratch it, but you put a Kim wipe on this. Okay? Now, a word of caution. I am going to put alcohol on this. Under no circumstance is there alcohol to be put on these rails. Under no circumstance. You will, these are self-lubricating bearings in here, and they will dry up, and you will have to send your machine to Silescape to change everything. Trust me, that is a job and a half. It's happened to me. So what I do here is I put a little bit of alcohol on the Q-tip, flick it to dry it off, and then I put my Kim wipe. As you see, it has soaked through, but I am controlling it. Okay, I'm not, it's not just gonna, uh, you know, have a blob of, of alcohol going all over the tip of the jet. What you want to do is go underneath here and ride the rim of the jet. That is giving you the problem. I'm gonna use this as an example. You don't go to the center, you ride around the rim to clean it, to start getting the material off. Under only very special circumstances do you put that alcohol on that tip. That's as a last resort type of thing. So I'm going to do this here. I'm going to go into my jet, I'm going to look underneath here, okay? And I'm doing the support jet. I'm riding the rim, riding the rim. You see, I'm going in a circular motion, not across the tip, but just riding the rim. And that's what I picked up from a fully functioning jet. Imagine the buildup had come on this, and you keep doing that. Once you do that and you're satisfied that it's been cleaned enough, you go with a new Q-tip, no alcohol. You come back and ride the rim. Just ride it a little bit more. Make sure nothing is there. Clean it up real good. As you can still see, we still have a little bit of schmutz. Use the rest of the Kim White. Take your time. Do it right. Just come around and just clean. Okay? Beautiful. There's nothing there. Now we have to go in and fire this jet and let the paper wipe it. So now you've cleaned the jet. Now you want to see if it works. Well, you put your backsplash back on. For lack of a better term, I'm sure they have a different term, but that's what we'll call it. Okay, make sure your magnet's on. And now if you follow me here to the front, you'll notice we're at the beginning. You press more, press support. Okay, press more. And here, now, first thing you do is you test it to see if this is working. If what we did worked, this is the way to do it. It's laying down a little bit of support material, and the camera is checking it. So, right here, at this part right here, it says that the printhead is ready for use. That means what we did was successful. No need to do anything else. What we've seen in this episode is how to clean the tip of a jet, and how to make sure that this jet is working. Hope you enjoyed this segment and stay with us. There are more best practice videos in CAD and 3D printing for jewelry manufacturing to come.